Part One of the First Book of Urizen. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Dennis Sayers. The First Book of Urizen by William Blake. Preludium to the First Book of Urizen Of the primeval priest's assumed power, When Eternal spurned back his religion, And gave him a place in the north, Obscure, shadowy, void, solitary. Eternals, I hear your call gladly, Dictate swift, winged words, and fear not to unfold your dark visions of torment. Chapter 1 1 Lo, a shadow of horror is risen in eternity, unknown, unprolific, self-closed, all-repelling. What demon has formed this abominable void, this soul-shuddering vacuum. Some said, It is Urizen, but unknown, abstracted, brooding secret, the dark power hid. 2. Times on times he divided and measured space by space in his ninefold darkness, unseen, unknown, Changes appeared in his desolate mountains, Rifted furious by the black winds of perturbation. 3. For he strove in battles dire, In unseen conflictions with shapes, Bred from his forsaken wilderness, Of beast, bird, fish, serpent, and element, Combustion, Blast, vapor, and cloud. 4. Dark, revolving in silent activity, Unseen in tormenting passions, An activity unknown and horrible, A self-contemplating shadow, In enormous labors occupied. 5. But, Eternals beheld his vast forests, age on ages he lay, Closed, unknown, brooding, shut in the deep, All avoid the petrific, abominable chaos. 6. His cold horrors silent, dark horizon prepared, his ten thousands of thunders, ranged in gloomed array, stretch out across the dread world, and the rolling of wheels, as of swelling seas, sound in his clouds, in his hills of stored snows, in his mountains of hail and ice. Voices of terror are heard like thunders of autumn. When the cloud blazes over the harvests. Chapter 2 1. Earth was not, nor globes of attraction. The will of the immortal expanded or contracted his all flexible senses. Death was not, but eternal life sprung. 2. The sound of a trumpet, with heavens awoke, And vast clouds of blood rolled round the dim rocks of horizon, So named that solitary one in immensity. 3. Shrill the trumpet, and myriads of eternity, Muster around the bleak deserts, now filled with clouds, Darkness and waters that rolled perplexed, laboring, and uttered words articulate, bursting in thunders, 
that rolled on the tops of his mountains. For from the depths of dark solitude, from the eternal abode in my holiness, hidden apart in my stern counsels, reserved for the days of futurity, I have sought for a joy without pain, for a solid without fluctuation. Why will you die, O Eternals? Why live in unquenchable burnings? 5. I fought with the fire, consumed inwards, into a deep world within, a void immense, wild, dark and deep, where nothing was, nature's wide womb and self-balanced stretched over the void, I alone, even I, the winds merciless bound, but condensing in torrents, they fall and fall. Strong, I repelled the vast waves, and arose on the waters, a wide world of solid obstruction. 6. Here alone, I in books formed of metals, have written the secrets of wisdom, the secrets of dark contemplation, by fightings and conflicts dire, with terrible monsters, sin bred, which the bosoms of all inhabit, seven deadly sins of the soul. Seven. Lo, I unfold my darkness, and on this rock place with strong hand the book of eternal brass written in my solitude. Eight. Laws of peace of love, of unity, of pity, compassion, forgiveness. Let each choose one habitation, his ancient infinite mansion, one command, one joy, one desire, one curse, one weight, one measure, one king, one God, one law. Chapter 3 1. The voice ended. They saw his pale visage emerge from the darkness, his hand on the rock of eternity unclasping the book of brass. Rage seized the strong. 2. Rage, fury, intense indignation, in cataracts of fire, blood, and gall, in whirlwinds of sulphurous smoke, and enormous forms of energy, all the seven deadly sins of the soul in living creations appeared in the flames of eternal fury. 3. Sundering, darkening, thundering, rent away with a terrible crash, eternity rolled wide apart. Wide, asunder, rolling, mountainous, all around, departing, 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 leaving ruinous fragments of life hanging, frowning cliffs, and all between an ocean of voidness, unfathomable. 4. The roaring fires ran o'er the heavens in whirlwinds and cataracts of blood, and o'er the dark deserts of your horizon. Fires pour through the void on all sides, on your horizon's self-begotten armies. 5. But no light from the fires, all was darkness in the flames of eternal fury. 6. In fierce anguish and quenchless flames, to the deserts and rocks he ran, raging to hide, but he could not. Combining, he dug mountains and hills in vast strength. He piled them in incessant labor, in howlings and pangs and fierce madness, 
long periods in burning fires, laboring, till hoary, and age broke, and aged, in despair, and the shadows of death. 7. And a roof, vast, petrific around, on all sides he framed, like a womb, where thousands of rivers in veins of blood pour down the mountains to cool the eternal fires beating without from eternals, and, like a black globe, viewed by sons of eternity, standing on the shore of the infinite ocean like a human heart, struggling and beating, the vast world of horizon appeared. 8. And Los, round the dark globe of horizon, kept watch for eternals to confine, the obscure separation alone, for eternity stood wide apart, as the stars are apart from the earth. 9. Los wept, howling around the dark demon, and cursing his lot, for in anguish horizon was rent from his side, and a fathomless void for his feet, and intense fires for his dwelling. 10. But Urizen laid in a stony sleep, unorganized, rent from eternity. 11. The Eternal said, What is this? Death. Urizen is a clod of clay. 12. Los howled in a dismal stupor, groaning, gnashing, groaning, till the wrenching apart was healed. 13. But the wrenching of Urizen healed not. Cold, featureless, flesh or clay, rifted with direful changes, he lay in a dreamless night. 14. Till Los roused his fires, affrighted at the formless, unmeasurable death. Chapter 4. A. 1. Los, smitten with astonishment, frightened at the hurling bones, to and at the surging, sulfurious, perturbed, immortal, mad, raging. 3. In whirlwinds and pitch and nitre, round the furious limbs of Los. 4. And Los formed nets and gins, and threw the nets round about. 5. He watched in shuddering fear, the dark changes, and bound every change with rivets of iron and brass. 6. And these were the changes of horizon. Chapter 4b. 1. Ages on ages rolled over him, in stony sleep ages rolled over him, like a dark waste, stretching, changeable by earthquakes riven, belching sullen fires, on ages rolled, ages, in ghastly sick torment. Around him, in whirlwinds of darkness, the eternal prophet howled, beating still on his rivets of iron, pouring solder of iron, dividing the horrible night into watches. 2. And Urizen, so his eternal name, his prolific delight obscured more and more in dark secrecy, hiding in surging so furious fluid his fantasies. The eternal prophet heaved the dark bellows, and turned restless the tongs, and the hammer incessant beat, forging chains, new and new, numbering with links, 
hours, days, and years. 3. The eternal mind, bounded, began to roll eddies of wrath, ceaseless round and round, and the sulfurious foam, surging thick, settled a lake, bright and shining clear, white as the snow on the mountains cold. 4. Forgetfulness, dumbness, necessity, in chains of the mind locked up, like fetters of ice shrinking together, disorganized rent from eternity. Los beat on his fetters of iron, and heated his furnaces, and poured iron solder and solder of brass. 5. Restless, turned the immortal, enchained, heaving, dolorous, anguished, unbearable, till a roof shaggy wild, enclosed in an orb, his fountain of thought. 6. In a horrible, dreamful slumber, like the linked infernal chain, a vast spine writhed in torment upon the winds, shooting pained ribs like a bending cavern and bones of solidness, froze over all his nerves of joy, and a first age passed over and a state of dismal woe. 7. From the caverns of his jointed spine down sunk with fright a red round globe hot burning deep deep down into the abyss panting conglobing trembling shooting out ten thousand branches around his solid bones and a second age passed over and the state of dismal woe eight in the harrowing fear rolling round, his nervous brain shot branches round the branches of his heart, on high into two little orbs, and fixed in two little caves, hiding carefully from the wind, his eyes beheld the deep, and a third age passed over, and a state of dismal woe. 9. The pangs of hope began, in heavy pain, striving, struggling, two ears in close volutions. From beneath his orbs of vision shot, spiring out, and petrified as they grew. And a fourth age passed, in a state of dismal woe. 10. In ghastly torment, sick. Hanging upon the wind, two nostrils bent down to the deep, and a fifth age passed over, and a state of dismal woe. 11. In ghastly torment, sick, within his ribs bloated round, a craving, hungry cavern, thence arose his channeled throat, and, like a red flame, a tongue of thirst and of hunger appeared, and a sixth age passed over, and a state of dismal woe. 12. Enraged and stifled with torment, he threw his right arm to the north and his left arm to the south, shooting out in anguish deep, and his feet stamped the nether abyss, in trembling, and howling, and dismay. And a seventh age passed over, and a state of dismal woe. End of Part 1 of the First Book of Urizen
The First Book of Eurism by William Blake Read by David Andres This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This is part two of a two-part recording. Chapter five. In terrors, loss shrunk from this task. His great hammer fell from his hand. His fires beheld, and sickening, hid their strong limbs in smoke. For with noises ruinous loud, with hurtlings and clashings and groans, the immortal endured his chains, though bound in a deadly sleep. All the myriads of eternity, all the wisdom and joy of life, roll like a sea around him, except what his little orbs of sight by degrees unfold. And now his eternal life, like a dream, was obliterated. Shuddering, the eternal prophet smote with a stroke from his north to south region. The bellows and hammer are silent now, a nerveless silence. His prophetic voice seized the cold solitude and dark void, the eternal prophet and yours enclosed. Ages on ages rolled over them, cut off from life and light, frozen into horrible forms of deformity. Loss suffered his fires to decay. Then he looked back with anxious desire, but the space undivided by existence struck horror into his soul. Los wept, obscured with mourning. His bosom earthquaked with sighs. He saw yours and deadly black, in his chains bound, and pity began. In anguish dividing and dividing, for pity divides the soul, in pangs, eternity on eternity, life in cataracts poured down his cliffs. The void shrunk the lymph into nerves, wandering wide on the bosom of night, and left a round globe of blood trembling upon the void. Thus the eternal prophet was divided before the death image of Urizen. For in changeable clouds and darkness, in a winterly night beneath, the abyss of loss stretched immense, and now seen, now obscured, to the eyes of eternals the visions remote of the dark separation appeared. As glasses discover worlds in the endless abyss of space, so the expanding eyes of immortals beheld the dark visions of Los and the globe of lifeblood trembling. The globe of lifeblood trembled, branching out into roots, fibrous, writhing upon the winds, fibers of blood, milk, and tears, in pangs, eternity on eternity. At length in tears and cries, embodied, a female form trembling and pale, waves before his deadly face. All eternity shuddered at sight of the first female, now separate, pale as a cloud of snow, waving before the face of Los. Wonder, awe, fear, astonishment, petrify the eternal myriads. At the first female form, now separate, they called her pity and fled. Spread a tent with strong curtains around them. Let cords and stakes bind in the void that eternals may no more behold them. They began to weave curtains of darkness. They erected large pillars round the void with golden hooks fastened in the pillars. With infinite labor, the eternals a woof wove and called it science. Chapter six. But Los saw the female and pitied. He embraced her, she wept. She refused in perverse and cruel delight. 
she fled from his arms. Yet he followed. Eternity shuddered when they saw man begetting his likeness on his own divided image. A time passed over. The Eternals began to erect the tent. When Enitharmon, sick, felt a worm within her womb, Yet helpless it lay, like a worm, in the trembling womb, to be molded into existence. All day the worm lay on her bosom, all night within her womb the worm lay, till it grew to a serpent, with dolorous hissings and poisons, round Enitharmon's loins, folding, coiled within Enitharmon's womb, the serpent grew casting its scales with sharp pangs the hissings began to change to a grating cry many sorrows and dismal throes many forms of fish bird and beast brought forth an infant form where was a worm before the eternals their tent finished alarmed with these gloomy visions when if anitharman groaning produced a man-child to the light. A shriek ran through eternity, and a paralytic stroke. At the birth of the human shadow, delving earth in his resistless way, howling, the child with fierce flames issued from Enitharmon. The Eternals closed the tent. They beat down the stakes, the cords, stretched for a work of eternity. No more Los beheld eternity. In his hands he seized the infant. He bathed him in springs of sorrow. He gave him to Enitharmon. Chapter 7 They named the child Orc. He grew fed with milk of Enitharmon. Los awoke her. Oh, sorrow and pain! A tightening girdle grew around his bosom. In sobbings he burst the girdle in twain, but still another girdle oppressed his bosom. In sobbings again he burst it. Again another girdle succeeds. The girdle was formed by day by night was burst in twain. These falling down on the rock into an iron chain, each other link by link locked, they took Orc to the top of a mountain. Oh, how Enitharmon wept! They chained his young limbs to the rock with the chain of jealousy beneath Urizen's dreadful shadow. The dead heard the voice of the child, and began to awake from sleep, all things. Heard the voice of the child, and began to awake to life. And Urizen, craving with hunger, stung with the odors of nature, explored his dens around. He formed a line, and a plummet, to divide the abyss beneath. He formed a dividing groove. He formed scales to weigh, he formed massy weights, he formed a brazen quadrant, he formed golden compasses, and began to explore the abyss, and he planted a garden of fruits. But Los encircled Enitharmon with fires of prophecy from the sight of Urizen and Orc, and she bore an enormous race. Chapter 8 Yurizen explored his dens, mountain, moor, and wilderness, with a globe of fire lighting his journey, a fearful journey, annoyed by cruel enormities, forms of life on his forsaken mountains. And his world teemed vast enormities, frightening, faithless, fawning portions of life, similitudes of a foot, or a hand, or a head, or a heart, 
or an eye, they swam mischievous, dread terrors, delighting in blood. Most yours and sicken to see, his eternal creations appear, sons and daughters of sorrow on mountains, weeping, wailing. First, Thiriel appeared, astonished at his own existence, like a man from a cloud born. And Utha, from the waters emerging, laments. Grodna rent the deep earth, howling amazed. His heavens immense, cracks like the ground parched with heat. Then Fusen flamed out, first begotten, last born. All his eternal sons in like manner, his daughters, from green herbs and cattle, from monsters and worms of the pit. He in darkness closed, viewed all his race, and his soul sickened. He cursed both sons and daughters, for he saw that no flesh nor spirit could keep his iron laws one moment. For he saw that life lived upon death. The ox in the slaughterhouse moans, the dog at the wintry door, and he wept, and he called it pity, and his tears flowed down on the winds. Cold he wandered on high, over their cities, in weeping and pain and woe, and wherever he wandered in sorrows, upon the aged heavens, a cold shadow followed behind him, like a spider's web, moist, cold and dim, drawing out from his sorrowing soul the dungeon-like heaven, dividing wherever the st footsteps of Urizen walked over the cities in sorrow. To the web, dark and cold, throughout all the tormented element stretched, from the sorrows of yours and soul, and the web was a female in embryo. None could break the web, no wings of fire, so twisted the cords, and so knotted the meshes, twisted like to the human brain, and all called it the net of religion. Chapter 9 then the inhabitants of those cities felt their nerves change into marrow, and hardening bones began, in swift diseases and torments, in throbbings and shootings and grindings, through all the coasts, till weakened, the senses inward rushed shrinking beneath the dark net of infection, till the shrunken eyes clouded over, discerned not the woven hypocrisy, but the streaky slime in their heavens, brought together by narrowing perceptions, appeared transparent air. For their eyes grew small like the eyes of a man, and in reptile forms, shrinking together, of seven feet stature they remained. Six days they shrunk up from existence, and on the seventh day they rested, and they blessed the seventh day, in sick hope, and forgot their eternal life. And their thirty cities divided, in form of a human heart. No more could they rise at will in the infinite void, but bound down to earth by their narrowing perceptions. They lived a period of years, then left a noisome body to the jaws of devouring darkness. And their children wept and built tombs in the desolate places and formed laws of prudence and called them the eternal laws of God. And the thirty cities remained surrounded by salt floods now called Africa. Its name was then Egypt. The remaining sons of Urizen beheld their brethren shrink together, 
beneath the net of Eurism. Persuasion was in vain, for the ears of the inhabitants were withered and deafened and cold, and their eyes could not discern their brethren of other cities. So Fusen called all together the remaining children of Urizen, and they left the pendulous earth. They called it Egypt and left it. And the salt ocean rolled and glowed. End of the Book of Urizen. This audiobook is brought to you by Full Audiobooks. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon if you love audiobooks.